This is kind of an introduction to 10 gigabit networking. Um, I will go over reasons why you would want to do this. Um, you know, for some people it's not needed. For other people, you're just going to watch this video and, you know, kind of see why I did it and why I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the stuff and ideas that I did and why I came to the conclusion of what I did and uh, how I'm going to go about implementing a 10 gigabit network, Ethernet network, not a peer to peer, but an Ethernet network. So internet and everything else will still work across the 10 gigabit NICs. Um, now what I did is because of my free NAS, I, you know, everybody was talking about these Connect X2 cards, these wonderful little babies. Um, they do not come out with SFP cards. You can go on Amazon and get two of these for about $42. That's 10 gigabit NICs, uh, single port, you know, for about, you know, 42 bucks. So you can do literally, you know, two servers and two computers or three computers and one server for under 80 bucks worth of NICs. Um, I've seen Intel NICs that are, you know, 10, 1000 that cost more than these NICs. Um, now, you will have to get SFPs for them, which are these guys. This is called a small form factor. Um, this is an SFP plus, which does 10 gigabit. SFP normals are, are 10, 100. Um, you know, are like the same thing as uh, RJ45 connections. Now, this is a fiber SFP. And what I'm gonna connect up into this guy is just a regular normal fiber cable like you see here, um, OM3, OM4 fiber. And uh, of course it's an LC connector. That's the most common now. And uh, how this how this network is going to look is this is going to go into my desktop over here, and I'm you know this guy will plug into there. Very simple. Um, this cable is junk. It's a bad cable, so don't you know? I know you guys are probably like, oh, don't do that. Ah, and you're cringing as I'm doing it. I know I cringe inside when I'm moving it around too. Um, but this cable no longer works. I I tried to had I had it out over by my switch, and it just is it just doesn't work for me anymore. So how this is how this little network is going to go is I'm, I got armored cable. Armored Kevlar cables from FS.com. Um, supposedly people vacuumed over them and laid them on the floor in their office and have stepped on them and they still work, you know, really good. So that's what I plan on running throughout uh, my whole house um, to two different PCs and to, um, I, I got different stuff connected to my FreeNAS. I actually have one of these cards connected with a DAT cable, which um, I don't have an extra of right now. Otherwise I'd show you it. It's just a, it's a copper cable that have SFP pluses that go from here up into a switch. Um, now, now that I'm adding all this stuff, my regular Cisco SG350X isn't gonna be able to handle all these 10 gigabit ports. It's only got four on there. Two are for trunking to connect other switches and two are either are shared ports. I can either do 10 gigabit across an RJ45 CAT6 or um, a small form factor, which is one of these SFP plugs that I'm showing you right here. Now, I don't mean to go kind of back around, but let me explain to you how I'm gonna get the fiber actually to the um, computers and from the server cabinet. I will take you into there, into the server room really quick here in a little bit, and I will show you and kind of explain to you and point out the different things that uh, I'm doing with my network and why I'm gonna be doing it. Now, one thing that's very important when I was looking for switches is I didn't want to have a bunch of trouble. You know, I wanted it just to work. So I've got two th two switches that are within my price range that I want, I'm willing to spend to set up a 10 gigabit network. You have the Macero TIC, um, you know, CRS317. This is brand new on Amazon for 337. That comes with 24 ports or no, hold on, 16 ports a small form factor, um, goodness. And that will allow you to do pretty much 16, 10 gigabit ports. It does have problems doing any lag or link aggregation. It will not do that. But at this price point, you know, I'm happy with 10 gigabit between point to point units. If I need lag or something like that, you're gonna go up to that, you know, eight, nine $9,000 range for a switch. Um, the other option, if you are a person that don't that wants to use a CLI or a command line and you don't mind learning it and spending some time is the Quanta LB6M. That's another awesome switch. It comes with dual redundant power supplies. This is what Amazon has been using for um, about six years now. They're now upgrading. That's why there's so many out there. Um, they are cheap. They are 20, were made in 2013, 2014. So the power supplies are 80 plus, but they are not super efficient. 
Um, so this switch is going to, you're going to kind of get hit on your power bill, but it does have link aggregation, command line structures. This is a 24 port, and it's also got uh, two R or four RJ45 Ethernet ports. It's got a console port and two management ports, which you can kind of see on here. This is my second guy. You can get them used for about 245 bucks, but if you just bite the bullet, you can get them brand new for 300 bucks. Um, I'm on eBay right now, and you can get it, you know, 235. There you go, one unit. But if I come back here and you just want to spend another you just, you just bring that that price point up just a little bit more and here's a brand new one for 300 bucks in the box brand new you know quantum set quantum I, i'm screwing i'm slaughter slaughtering the name quanta uh, l quanta lb6 m switch so all right now back now I'm, i know i'm jumping all around guys so just give me a minute here but and i got a cat that's kind of trying to play with my fiber you, you, you want this? Come on. Come come and introduce yourself, Sh Shayla. Come on. Shara always shows up in the videos. Come on. Yeah, you're not going to come up here. Come on. This is Shayla. She's our new addition. But she wants to play with Daddy's broken fiber cable. Because she's got to inspect everything. Oh, yeah, honey. I don't want you fucking on that. Anyways, let me get back to where I was originally. So, what's going to happen is this is going to be the wall plate and you can go on and get these uh fiber lc guys it's an lc to lc connector pretty much and let me take this apart and kind of show you what it's going to look like in the wall so of course you have your wall that's like this and your piece of fiber is going to come up like this and then this is going to be in the wall hey shayla and it's going to connect like that well one very important thing about fiber even though it's armored you don't want to take the bend radius too far so if i gotta have it like that it's gonna have to bend real sharp and that's what i think brett messed this cable up is the bend radius got over bent so i got an angled wall jack and that's gonna allow me to bring this on an angle so when it's actually in the wall this is gonna come up through the floor and it's gonna have a me uh the minimum amount of bend right here so the fiber doesn't get wrecked and then of course if i come to the other side here guys bear with me for a second this is what's gonna pop out in the, into the bedroom so I also ordered uh, two, mil two, mini two, two meter um, armored fiber cables to go from here to the PCs. And that way, even though they're gonna be in uh, J hooks or bridle rings, you know, and, and also have Velcro around them, I still wanna be very careful with them. And then this is gonna loop around. And of course, this is just for, and, you know, to kind of show you, this is gonna loop around out of the wall and then into the back of the PC. So, of course, this card is going to be in the back of your PC, and that just connects like that. I decided to go with fiber just because I could get it from FS.com and the links that I wanted. The links that I wanted, and I didn't have to worry about uh, getting an active DAC cable and all that stuff. Yes, I could go over to RJ45 with CAT6, but the switches are so expensive. If I want a switch that does 10 gigabit RJ45, um, I'm looking at dropping at least just for a 16 or 24 port, I'm looking at dropping at least a grand. That's not before I get any NICs for any of my computers um, or any jumper cables, you know, to actually go to devices and stuff like that. And then everything needs to be shielded. I know if you looked at a couple of my other videos, Shayla, can I get my fiber cable back? Huh? Can I get my fiber cable back? No? Thank you. Yeah, so pretty much the most cost cost efficient way would to be go to go with SR SFPs. Also, you got to understand that the SFPs don't come with these NICs, so you do have to buy them. So that's why you go on FS.com. They do have local um, local manufacturer, not local manufacturing. I'm sure everything's made in China, but they do have local distribution in America. So you're not waiting two, three, four weeks to get your SFPs or your cables. They will actually make armored OM3 and OM4 cables cut to size to whatever you want them. If you got some funky size that you want, say you want, you know, uh, a 16.5 foot cable. I don't know what that is in, in uh, uh, meters, but you can type that in in their in their actual thing, and it'll it'll pop out in meters, you know, whatever it comes to, and they'll they'll cut it, make it, put the ends on the LC ends on for you, and send it. They offer two different finishes for um 
the LCNs. I can't remember exactly what they are. I know one is a, a rounded finish and the other one's a, an angled finish. It, you know, you don't need anything special. Um, I know I did a lot of research to figure out what would be the best application for this. And for myself, I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I budgeted myself about a thousand dollars to do this and I am coming under budget. I still haven't purchased the switch. Um, of course, I'm making the assumption that you already have a managed switch that takes small form factor. Um, if you don't, you can find some cheap Abras out there for about 99 bucks. But the big thing with switches, the older your switches are, the more they're gonna suck in power. So you might buy that switch for $100, but let's say every month that switch is gonna cost you $15, $16 on your power bill. You're, you're not gonna save much money. Down the road, you're looking at you know hundreds of dollars that you're sucking in power that you know you could have saved if you would have went and got you know a newer switch for per se. So that's really important to do, guys. Um, at least for me, I, I yes, I'm I'm gonna spend a little bit more money up front, but I'm gonna get that money back in return. I'm not gonna be giving that to the power company, especially here in Wisconsin, where you have a 14 to 15 cent kilowatt hour um, power rate, which really sucks, but that's how expensive it is. So I'm. I'm really, really keen about how many watts my servers pull, my power supplies, their efficiency. I just upgraded uh, the Freenas to a 24 bay um, uh, JBOD box. Um, it's really not a JBOD box because it's actually got the motherboard and memory in there and all that stuff. And uh, if I come over here, and this is the big reason why I'm upgrading to 10 gig because I got my Freenas, I want to be able to. Um, transfer video files and media files onto the FreeNAS really fast. I also have family members that access the, the media server that if I'm doing video editing, I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want them to be interrupted. So I can still transfer fully, you know, once I get 10 gigabit on my side, I'll still, I won't be able to transfer the full bandwidth, but it'll be a lot faster than 128 megabytes per second, which is the current 10 1000 um, ethernet adapter. So what's nice right now is I got the Mellanox connected to my actual switch through a three, yeah, three meter DAC cable that I ordered from Amazon. Um, one of the cables ended up being bad and the guy supposedly says he's going to send me a new cable. I haven't seen any tracking information or shipping information about it yet, but uh, you know, this is the main reason I am actually doing it. So there's a couple of reasons why you would want 10 gigabit networking in your home. Number one, you, you, want them, you want everything to be really fast between all your devices. So if you've got backup media, um, let's say like a Windows Server or a FreeNAS or an Unraid, well, let's not talk about Unraid. I'm not going to even get into that. But say you got a server, you got a, you know, um, a, a, a Linux or a Unix server, you know, you put one of these 10 gigabit cards in, you put one in your, your workstation and maybe a secondary workstation of a roommate or a friend or your wife or whoever, and there you go, you're off to the races. Um, your bandwidth and, and throughput is just, you went from like this to like that. And then if you got a media server or any other services running off of there, you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be trying to sh all share that 128 megabyte per second through one a gigabit connection. You know, um, there's gonna be a lot more bandwidth to, there's gonna be a lot more bandwidth to be able to share between the devices. Meaning, you know, if your wife starts uploading a, a, a YouTube video and you're editing a YouTube video and you're gonna back it up to the free NAS and now say your son decides he wants to start watching the media, you know, he's watching the stuff off the media server and now say your, your family decides they're gonna start watching like, you know, your dad doesn't live with you or whatever. Say he wants to watch off your media you know, server all that stuff is going to be coming in and combined and depending on what everything is, you know, what the size of the videos are at, which 1080p is the most common. So let's say 20 megabytes per second is about what they need. Well, at five people, you're, you're pretty much tapped out a one gigabit per second connection. Um, with a 10 gigabit, you know, all that extra bandwidth's there. So if I'm transferring something and I got all these people on my media server, it, it's not going to, it, you know, it's barely going to, gonna gonna dent anything you know i'll still be able to transfer at three four five hundred megabytes per second um and the other reason you'd want something like this you just want the fastest you just want the fastest stuff in your home this is what you're going to want to go with um 
if that's you, you know, and you want to do and you want to save some money, I, I would say you could also go with the Cisco switch, but they're in the eight, nine thousand dollar range. Um, there is a Netgear, I want to say it's a 24 port uh, small form factor SFP plus switch that is, uh, I think the price point on that is like $890 or $900. Um, that's a good option. I was looking at actually doing that option too. Um, Netgear's got a GUI that you can use. I just, it, to Netgear for me seems more like small business. It's not so much enterprise grade. Um, if I get a switch that is a, uh, let's say enterprise grade. I know it's coming into the home. I want it to have dual power supplies, but I also don't want it to, to you know, muck my power bill up to the extent to where I'm having to pay $15, $20 a month just to run that thing. Um, you know, I want it to be very efficient. The reason I like dual power supplies is because everything that goes into my server rack, I want one to go into the utility and one to go into my BBU. That way, if I'm doing video editing or I'm watching something off my server and I lose power, my internet modem, all my switches, and all my servers will stay up, and that way they can, you know, shut down properly, especially with using uh, ZFS. I know I'm kind of getting on a tangent here, guys. I apologize. I'm totally getting off some, but uh, we're about to go into the server room, and I'm going to kind of explain some stuff with you um, about why I'm doing this, uh, the equipment I'm using, the whole server rack as a whole, and... Uh... From top to bottom, you got your networking, and then you're, you're looking at some Dell PowerEdge servers, and then the rest are super micros, and then the very, very bottom is going to be uh, the UPSs. And uh, that big 24 bay guy is the new upgraded FreeNAS, and that's the guy that's getting uh, the 10 gigabit treatment. Um, the very top, the very, very top guy, which is a super micro, that is actually, you got, it has the PFSins in it, and that is actually doing all the router the routing and uh, um, DHCP and all that other stuff, IPSD, Demon, and uh, sorry, let me say that one again. The very top super micro one, this guy right, uh, this guy right here, this is doing PFSins, and this has got all the PFSin stuff on it, so this does all our uh, all our routing, and uh, it's got our firewall, and uh, all that other fun jazz. Um, these two guys used to just be Windows servers. I, I do for screwing around. This is the old FreeNAS, which has now been uh, decommissioned. This used to be the PFSins. It's just a shell that's in here right now as an extra. This has no motherboard in it. And then this guy right here is the new FreeNAS. Um, this has, you know, it's going to be getting filled with some disks. It does have eight disks and one uh, SSD, kind of. Um, or I shouldn't say SSD. It's got one... Um, Raptor in it for for scratch for f fast reads and writes and then this bottom guy is uh, filled with nothing but batteries This is the UPS for all these guys for these two servers and the switch and the switches on the other side Which we are going to take you around there in one second. Of course the nice thing about this server rack is it does come with uh, you know uh, anti-static uh, bracelets, so when I'm working on stuff you, know, you don't have to worry about static or ESD and all that fun jazz. Of course, everything is grounded on these guys. I don't know if you can kind of pan down there a little bit. Everything's grounded. The doors are grounded. Uh, as soon as we take you around to the other side, there's a big giant ground bar. Um, all either, everything's, Everything in here has been grounded. So you don't have to worry about uh, um, transient surges or lightning strikes or any of that stuff. Or, and, and static, that's another big thing, static with these guys. You don't want to get static electricity in your components. All right, just give me a second, and we'll bring the camera around here for a second if you want to kind of get a wide view of the, the whole rack. I know that uh, I was going to actually uh, cut this guy in half, and that's how we ended up getting this 42 bay rack, and I had to cut this whole guy in half. And uh, so what we did is we cut it in half, and we put angle aluminum in here, and these guys with nuts and uh, nuts and, and countersinked holes so they're nice and smooth so it looks kind of decent. And then these panels of course come off if you need to put wiring or power. And then everything comes in the holes right up here which you can't see there's two holes up here. All the networking cables filled in here and then everything up here is on J hooks. Um, I went and put them on J hooks just because it's easier to run the cables. Um, you want to come over here onto this side we'll look at the networking really quick um, our very top is just a filler plate this is a, my MVR battery backup and a, a old Western digital drive that I still have backups on mainly photos and, and uh, 
um, some MP3s. Um, this is the new Cisco switch right here that you see all filled up here and then our patch panel. If you can kind of get a view over to this way right side, that's where our fibers go on. See, I got our two fibers that are going to be going to our upstairs. That's what the main video is about. So it's actually in my patch panel. So what's going to happen is the Macario is going to come down here. All the fibers are going to feed up into there with SFPs. 1,000, uh, um, 10 port PoE. This is going to eventually run three uh, APs for wireless. And then the rest of the ports that are left over are going to be used for CCTV cameras on the outside. I plan on doing fisheye cameras and I'll probably have a video for that. But, uh, and then of course, if you come down here, I know this is a mess guys, sorry, I've been messing with stuff, adding stuff. I gotta come through here and clean this out. If you look down here, this is actually connected with a copper DAC cable 10, via 10 gigabit, and this is the FreeNAS. And then of course I got failover backup, and there's two one gigabit connections coming into here, and these are link aggregated. And then of course, the other guy that's in here is your IPMI, um, which lets you do remote management of FreeNAS. And there, of course, here's another side, uh, another ESD anti-static bracelet for when you're working on stuff. And, you know, it's just a very nice rack. It didn't come with the other side plates, but, you know, this is what it is. If you can get into here, JR, and kind of look, uh, um, I don't know if you can get the camera like that. If you look here, there is a grounding bar in here, right up in here. That allows you to ground your different devices. I don't know if I'm touching it. Yeah, it's this guy right here. This guy right here, there's a copper grounding bar that allows you to uh, ground all your devices. And then of course, this comes out and ends up going behind where the camera is currently right now. All right guys, this is Tech Nitwit back here in about a year in the future. I'm going through the server case with you guys. Um, this bad boy right here, it's got our 10 gigabit uh, 16 port Microtech switch. Um, it's absolutely awesome. Get 10 gigabit speeds to the desktop. I can back up my video editing. I can back up my media. I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm sitting pretty. My roommate's got a 10 gigabit per second uh, connection. We just need wi I mean, we just need 10 gigabit per second Wi-Fi now, you know. One can wish. Um, so I definitely um, am very happy with it. It has solved the problem. It's not for everybody, but if you are in the unique position where your workloads dictate that you need that type of a connection, it's probably a good idea. Or if you're just an enthusiast that want the best type of connection you can have, that's going to be why we want to go. Um, I am actually starting to replace the Mellanox Connect X2s because of the new Windows 3.5 um, .NET framework. Um, they are dropping support for the driver that it uses. Uh, I utilize the Connect X3 driver for the Connect X2. Of course, on FreeBSD, I don't have to worry about something like that. It's just, uh, it just works. But of course, if Windows is dropping support for it, will FreeBSD? I don't know. So I'm looking at another cheap replacement. You have the Dell, uh, or not Dell, you got the Intel 520s. Um, they're a very good card. They're dual port. So at least if you have a port that goes bad or something, it gives you options. Or if you want to set up a lag, um, I don't know if Microtech has fixed the lag slash redundancy issue with their switch. If you run two connections, um, I, this is not what this video is about, and I'm not going to get into it. If you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, uh, you know, go ahead and throw them in the comments and give me a like. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, it's Tech Knitwood here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.